silly, silly, silly disciples, you know? I mean, if we were on a lake, you know, eating sandwiches, drinking lemonade, enjoying a nice calm day on the lake, and we saw some dude walking toward us on the uh, water, we would be like, oh, it must be Jesus. We wouldn't be like, it's a ghost, or, oh my God, what's, who's that freak on the water? You know, like, what's he doing, right? Those silly, silly disciples. I mean, we've all heard this story before, have we not? This is one of those, those awesome uh, miracles that captures the fancies of our minds, and I don't think that there's a single movie out there about Jesus that does not have, in one shape or another, this story of Jesus walking on the water in the storms. And, and of course, uh, Peter, you know, comes out to him, and what scares him when he's on the water? Well, that's what the Bible says, but in the movies, usually, it's the large waves. He starts looking around, oh my goodness, and he starts to sink, and then Jesus grabs him. Uh, but you're right, in the Bible, it's the wind. He notices the wind, and the wind, forget the waves, it's the wind that, Jesus, that, that Peter is scared by. But I mean, can you picture Jesus actually walking on water? It's hard to imagine. Almost. It's hard to wrap your head around how you could actually walk on water. I mean, it would be it would be a little insane to really imagine ourselves doing it. I don't even know if I had devices that would allow me to walk on water. I would feel so secure in doing it. How cool would it be, though? Wouldn't it be awesome to walk on water? And actually, I don't know what should be cooler. To have the ability to walk on water? Or to be one of the ones witnessing Jesus doing this. I mean, if there is any miracle that proves who Jesus is, short of him raising someone from the dead, not that he did that, uh, I think walking on water has to top it. I mean, healings, plenty of people can do healings, right? There were, there were people all over the place doing healings. All you have to do is turn on TBN and watch Jimmy Swagger, and I swear you'll see a healing somewhere, right? But walking on water... I have not witnessed a televangelist do that one yet. I've heard, I've heard of people praying for water and it raining, but walking on it, that takes somebody special. But we all know the story. Jesus, after a long day with the crowds, uh, decides to send his disciples on across the lake, uh, uh, the Sea of Galilee. It's actually a big lake. Uh, Dan Gepford from Sussex actually was telling the story uh, last week, I believe, that, uh, that he, he had been there on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. Uh, him and our district superintendent and a group of uh, more recently uh, ordained clergy went on this trip. And uh, he says he gets to, to the Sea of Galilee, and it, it, you can clearly see the other side of it, right? Like It's, it's like, you know, like looking across, the, I don't know, pick a big lake. But you can see the other side of it. It's not even like the Great Lakes where you can't see the other side of it. This is, this is fairly small in scope. Big enough that you have to you know, use a boat to get to the other side. You don't want to walk around it because it's rather long. But, but it's fairly small. I mean, it's not an ocean. Now, the way the winds, according to Dan, come off the mountains, which are really kind of like our uh, Appalachian Mountains, uh, the way the wind comes off, it can cause like a fierce howling wind, and, and storms can come up over the mountains and really cause some havoc for the fishermen and the people on the lake. So here are the disciples. They go out on the lake. Jesus is up on a mountain by himself to pray, trying to spend some time uh, with God, you know. And of course, it's when Jesus is spending a long, you know, time, quiet time with God. Uh, that the disciples run into trouble, right? And so there they are in the midst of the lake, and the storm comes up, and they really have no clue what they're going to do. They're rowing and rowing and bailing and bailing, and the water just doesn't seem to ever leave the boat, and they just can't even tell what direction they're going in anymore. And then lo and behold, who do they see? But Jesus, or a figure rather, walking on the water. And it says that this figure was ahead of them. Which either means that Jesus walked really fast and passed them in the storm, or they were rowing in circles and somehow found their way back to where Jesus was starting off. Either way, there they are, 
and there Jesus is, and they shout, my goodness, it's a ghost. Now you have to remember, these aren't clear-headed people at this point. They're exhausted. They've been rowing for God knows how long and seemingly getting nowhere. Their boat is sinking as they're trying to bail the water out. And so when they look up in the hazy, misty, windy, watery, uh, uh, you know, lake, there's this figure that they can't really make out, and he appears to be walking on it. Now, let's be honest, people. What would you think? <laughs> right? Like, let's be honest. It's a ghost. It's a ghost, and you don't even have to watch Ghost Adventures to know that. It's a ghost. So, who can blame Peter and the others for losing their nerve for a second or two? I know I can. Now, we often look at, uh, or Peter calls out to the Lord, rather, that if it is you, if this is you, Lord, call me out onto the water, and I will come. Once they figure it out it's Jesus, Peter's taking the next step. Call me out, command me to come and walk on the water, and I'll do it. So Jesus is like, all right, now yeah, come. <laughs> come out and chill with me. And so Peter hops over the boat and starts walking out. But then he notices the wind. And the winds are howling around him. And you can imagine, now, this sounds, this sounds silly to I me, mean, he notices the wind. Like, when you look at the waves or something, like, more ferocious. But let me tell you, when you're walking on water, I can't imagine your balance as I would. It's very easy to notice the wind. And the wind is probably pushing him this way and that way. And he gets scared. And he begins to sink.
that just because of that minute or two, just in light of that minute or two, that he had no faith at all. We tend to look at doubt as a bad thing. But the reality is we all have moments of doubt. Peter didn't lack faith. He just got overwhelmed with doubt. And doubt is actually a useful resource if we know how to deal with it and how to respond to it. There are people who let the doubt paralyze them to the point where they don't call out <laughs> and they, they're just cynical about everything and they sink to the bottom. And then there are people like Peter who are overwhelmed with doubt, but in the midst of it, they reach out and they call for God. They reach out and they grasp what little faith they have left. And it is those people who in turn watch their faith grow. Are we the type that gives up hope when we are surrounded by waves and surrounded by the howling winds? Are we the type to just give up and sink? Or are we going to allow our doubts to push us to call out to the buoyant one, to Jesus, to the master of the winds and the waves? Are we going to give up hope? Or are we going to call out, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Don't let your doubts get the best of you. And don't beat yourself up because you have them. Without doubt, there could be no faith. Again, Paul asks, what's faith if you see it before you? What's there to hope in if it's right there? Right? And we know Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1, right? For faith is... Anybody know the verse? For faith is the hope in things unseen. unseen, right? And the expectation, uh, yeah, something like that. But the promise of things to come. It's, a, it's the promise of things to come and the hope of things unseen. Thank you, Bob. Right. Both, both of those, both of those tell us that, that doubt is not the end. And faith grows out of our so doubt is not to be, you know, woed over. Oh, woe is me, I'm such a doubtful per person. Another person we attribute doubt to is Thomas, right? Why, why is Thomas doubting Thomas? Can anybody remember? Because the other guys got to see it first. Because the other guys got to see it first. And of course they believed it, right? And he says, I'm not believing it until I see it. But did he end up touching the holes in the hands and in the side? The second Jesus appeared, he kneeled, went down to his knees and said, My Lord and my God. And let me tell you, that particular doubting Thomas found himself martyred in India, a long, long way away from home. Doubt is not the end, but the beginning. Doubt is what pushes us to grab for what little faith we have. And when we do, we watch it grow. And then that faith carries us. Just as Jesus carried us. Don't let your doubt get the best of you. Don't let your fears drown you in the sea of despair. Rather, trust in Jesus to give you the buoyancy you need to not only survive, but thrive in the stormy sea. Kierkegaard said, and if you don't know who Kierkegaard is, he's a, a quirky Danish philosopher from Copenhagen. And uh, try to read him sometime. But he's not an easy read, but he's fun and rewarding if you can get through it. He said that faith, faith is being held above 20, uh, was it, fathoms? Yeah, 20 fathoms or 20 leagues, over, 20 leagues of water over the sea. And still believing that you will live. That's faith. You have no reason for believing it, but you do. And it's that faith that keeps you afloat. It's that 
faith that allows you to be like Jesus, allows you to become a buoyant one. It allows you to move forward rather than be paralyzed. So rather trust in Jesus, because he will give you the buoyancy you need. And before you know it, you will be walking on the water side by side with the Lord on the way back to the boat. What a miracle, indeed. Let us pray. Gracious God, there are times in our lives where we, found our, we find ourselves caught in a storm. And we find ourselves doubting. Doubting in ourselves and maybe even sometimes doubting in you. But that doubt is a gift if we only respond to it faith. Lord, strengthen us. Make us be a people of living faith that we may move forward no matter how deep the water